Season 6, Episode 8 starts out by showing us Lady Crane taking Arya's advice to add a tone of anger and vengeance to her act. The audience receives the performance with great applause, and backstage Lady Crane finds a half-dead Arya hiding behind the curtains. She takes Arya back to her house, patches her up, and we learn that Lady Crane messed up Bianca's face big time, the actress who hired the faceless men to kill her. Finally, she has Arya drink some milk of the poppy, basically opium, and it knocks her the fuck out. In the next scene, the hound comes across four guys sticking their fingers up each other's butts and smelling it, it's pretty gross, and he murders all of them. I'm not sure if they were just mercenaries or members of the Brotherhood Without Banners, but it doesn't really matter as they're all dead now. A cool fact I came across was that the guy who got decapitated was actually one of the Jon Snow impressionists on Jimmy Kimmel. His name is Steve Love and he also has a YouTube channel where he does Game of Thrones impressions. So in the next scene, we see Varys and Tyrion walking through Marine, and we find out Varys is leaving for Westeros to gather support for Daenerys and ships. Uh, it's pretty convenient that he left right before the Masters came to attack Marine, but I don't think he's a traitor type. Going back to King's Landing, the High Sparrow requests the presence of Cersei and the Great Sept of Baelor. Cersei refuses and tells Lancel Lannister that the High Sparrow can come to the Red Keep if he wanted to speak with her. They threaten each other for a bit, and one of the sparrows tries to attack the mountain, but only manages to make a little dent. Gregor Clegane then throws the man to the ground and rips his head off, which basically ends the scuffle. Brienne and Pod arrive at Riverrun, only to find the Lannister army outside of its walls. This whole scene was basically old friends reunited, Pod and Bronn, and Brienne and Jaime. The two discuss their different goals for the fate of Riverrun, and Brienne says that she'll try to persuade the Blackfish to surrender his home, and march north with the rest of the Tully forces. But the Blackfish has other plans. I've said no three times already. I have a signed letter from your niece, Sansa Stark. I haven't seen her since she was a child. I don't know her signature, I don't know you, and I will not surrender. Double the guards tonight. And even after reading Sansa's letter, the Blackfish refuses to help, saying that he needs to protect his home. So Cersei, Kyburn, and the Mountain arrive in the throne room to hear Tommen make an announcement. She is denied access to standing by her own son, and Tommen makes an announcement saying that Cersei and Loras' trial will be held in the Great Sept of Baelor, and that trial by combat is now forbidden. Instead, they will be tried by the Seven Septons, pretty much destroying any chance Cersei had of winning. But Kyburn does say this. That old rumor you told me about. My little birds investigated. And? Is it just a rumor or something more? More. Oh. Much more. So this rumor Kyburn investigated was probably the stash of wildfire beneath King's Landing. With news that the trial by combat is no longer allowed, I fear that Cersei may go insane and try to destroy King's Landing in episode 10. Or the rumor could also be about the High Sparrow and possibly some dirt they have on him. In Marine, Tyrion, Missande, and Grey Worm pass the time by telling jokes until the Masters arrive with a ton of ships looking to reclaim the city. After that, Jaime sees his prisoner Edmer and they talk for a while, most of it not so important. The real takeaway from this scene is this. I'll send for your baby boy, and I'll launch him into River Run with a catapult. Because you don't matter to me, Lord Edmund. Your son doesn't matter to me. The people in the castle don't matter to me. Only Cersei. And if I have to slaughter every Tully who ever lived to get back to her, that's what I'll do. Jamie allows Edmer to enter Riverrun unharmed, and I really thought it was a trap, but obviously it wasn't. Much to my dismay though, Edmer tells his troops to lay down their arms and to open the gates. I think Edmer does this for a couple of reasons. First, he knows Jamie still has a son whom he most likely cares about very much and wants to see again. Secondly, Edmer's been a prisoner for years and the last thing he wants to do is fight a prolonged battle with the Lannisters and Freys, knowing what they're capable of and the fact that they're outnumbered. Having knowledge of all this, Edmer probably wanted to save the lives of his men, rather than Jaime eventually killing every last one of them. 
The Blackfish makes a horrible decision in my opinion by throwing his life away rather than going up north to help Sansa reclaim Winterfell from the Boltons. And finally, Jamie sees Brienne leaving River Run and they say their goodbyes. Skipping back to Marine, the Masters are raining fire down on the entire city and there's nothing really anyone can do until Daenerys shows up. We can see Drogon in the sky getting ready to demolish the slavers, but I think we'll have to wait till episode 10 to see that scene because episode 9 will most likely be devoted to the Bastard Bowl. So the Hound comes across the Brotherhood Without Banners as they are hanging the three men who massacred the village. After they allow the Hound to execute two of the killers, they attempt to recruit him into the Brotherhood, knowing that the White Walkers are coming from the north. They don't show us the Hound's response, but I believe he joins up with them and heads north, as he doesn't really have much else to do. This scene also ended the possibility that Lady Stoneheart would be shown in the series, as she was in the books. So finally we're brought back to Arya's storyline, and somehow the Waif finds out where Arya is, and she ends up killing Lady Crane. So they go on a super long chase all throughout the city, and it looks as if Arya's fucked, but she kills the only source of light in the room, and ends up beating the Waif as she trained blind for a long period of time while the Waif had not. I was sort of pissed that they didn't show any of the battle, or they didn't show Arya cutting the Waif's face off, but hopefully they'll make up for it in the next episode. Arya returns the Waif's face to the wall and confronts Jack and Hagar. He pretty much tells Arya that her training is complete, and she is finally no one, but she says fuck that, I'm Arya Stark. And I'm going home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Thanks for watching the video guys, please click like if you enjoyed it. And I'm going to be putting out Game of Thrones content every week, probably a couple videos, um, until the season's done. And then I'll be putting out more content on stuff that interests me. So if that sounds like something up your alley, please subscribe to my channel. I need to eat. No, I'm just kidding. This isn't my job, but yeah, subscribe please. Thanks. Bye.